Good day, everybody, and this is Dan Wilkins with the first Lua tutorial video. So, I'm going to assume you have everything set up and can actually run Lua code. So, that will be part of another video, but let's give this a shot. So, let's first up. Uh, the first thing I'll teach you is comments. So, a comment starts with two minus signs, two dashes, whatever you want to call them and you can type anything you want after the comment and it's not going to affect the program at all it's just going to be there as a note to yourself so I can write Lua Tutorial 1 uh, by Dan Wilkins right here and if I were to run this that has no effect whatsoever okay but let's get some code that actually has some effect so comments are very useful but they don't affect how the program works they're a note to yourself a note to other programmers and they're often important, but in a basic program, a very simple program, they're probably, you don't need a lot of them. All right, so let's just get some thing to show up on the screen. So I can just print hello world. That's uh, kind of the traditional first uh, program statement. So let's run this. Okay, so the way I have things set up here is I press F5 and it runs. So your setup might be different. So hello world, there it is. Great. All right. So print is just a way to get text to show up on the screen. Let's see, this is another line of text. Let's see if it shows up with a new line at the end or if each one is on a separate line. Okay, so in Lua, you, if you want to print something out, print parentheses and put it in quotes, whatever you want the message to be, close parentheses. All right, and it prints a new line at the end. So in other words, Hello world, and after that uh, print, this one will show up on the second line uh, of the program, etc. By the way, this box that shows up when we run it is called the console, and for simple programs at first, this is a good uh, type of program to run because you don't have to worry about graphics, you don't have to understand everything about graphics before you can just start writing some code. So we're going to start with that. Okay, so just print by itself is not all that interesting. Um, it is important. And but um, let's make something a little bit more interesting. Let's get the user to have to type in their name. So what I'm going to do is I first decide on a variable name. So I can call this uh, username, but really I could call it anything. But I decide on a variable name, and then I say that it equals io.read with two parentheses like that. So let's make sure we pose the question first. What is your name? Question mark. Okay. So this is just another print. We understand how those work. And then this line here, io.read, is when the user is going to have to type something in. And what's going to happen is whatever they type gets remembered, gets stored somewhere in the computer's memory. And the exact location that it's stored is what we call username. All right. So whenever you want them to type something in, go like that. And you know what? I can even put a comment here they have to type in uh, a string and press enter. When I say string, that's the technical term for just uh, several letters. Several letters, spaces, numbers, all strung together. Okay, so let's run this and see what it looks like. So it says, hello world, this is another line of text, what is your name? And I can put that, and nothing happens with it, but we can use it. Watch what we do here. Print hello uh, space, and what I'm going to do is not just print hello, I'm going to add in username so that whatever they type here, remember we said that it's kind of stored in the computer's memory, whatever they type here will show up here. And the way I need, uh, chain things together in Lua, if I want to print out multiple things in one print, I'm going to use two dots, two periods. So let's run this now. What is your name? Dan W. Hello, Dan W. So it took what I typed in here, it stored it in memory, and it retrieved it here or accessed it when I have it do that right there. So hope this makes sense. You can do a lot with just that, but we're going to just cover a bunch of concepts here. By the way, notice I put um, a space here because if I didn't put the space and we ran it, it would look, it would not look right, basically. All right. So let's see. I can make a Mad Libs program, so let me show you how that looks. So I'm going to suggest this as your first program after you just do some tinkering with the print 
um, I suggest you do this, task one, man libs program. So here's how this would look. You would say something like type an animal. And then we're going to store whatever they type inside a, a variable that we'll call animal, but we could call it whatever we want. We could call it that, and it would work exactly the same as long as we were consistent with our spelling and that we always you know, spelled it the same way. So type in animal, it's going to be io.read, uh, print, type a location, and location equals io.read, and then we'll have the story print out. Okay, you can be a lot more creative than I'm about to be in this story. So a Mad Libs is basically you ask people to fill in a bunch of blanks, and whatever uh, the blanks are, they kind of get plugged into the story in certain spots. So let's see. Uh, we have an animal and a location. Once there was a, a skunk who lived in a cave. Okay, so obviously this is not yet using any of the, um, the information that they typed. So what we'll do is instead of skunk, we're going to break out a quotes, chain together with the two dots, animal, two dots, and do the same thing over here. So we break out a quotes, two dots, location, two dots, and then back in quotes. All right, so it's usually best to not have the line go way off the right side, but in this case, it went a little bit off the edge. Let's just do that. Okay, so let's just run this and see how this works. So uh, here we go. What is your name, Dan W? Type in animal, let's go with fox. Let's go with um, igloo. Once there was a fox who lived in an igloo. Okay, so what I suggest, ask about 10 questions and use those in a 10 sentence story. Okay, so that's what I suggest for your first task. It's a pretty simple uh, first program, but I think it will really teach you to um, help you to wrap your mind around this idea of storing data in variables um, and then printing them out inside these print statements. So let's keep these first videos nice, short, and sweet so you can knock that task out, run it, have somebody try your program, and uh, after that you'll have made your first solid step towards learning to program. So thanks for tuning in, folks. Take care.